And this is a day in the word with Minister William Ryan. I pray that the word today will enrich your lives. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will do something great and mighty in your lives from today. God bless you. It's good to be with you again. Now we're going to look at something uh, which is pretty significant. The Mormons or LDS Church better known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now this movement was started by Joseph Smith in the 1820s after he claimed to have had some visions while in upstate New York. However, this religious sect or movement continued to grow after the death of Joseph Smith as they followed Bingham Young to what is known as the Utah Territories this group has grown to about 15 million worldwide. Now, the theologically, this group is considered by mainstream Christianity as a cult. And the reason being is that there are many questions to be asked about the so-called visions of Joseph Smith, Jr. And also the prophecies that never came to pass one in question is that of the New Jerusalem that was to be built in Jackson County, Missouri, sometime during his lifetime, but somehow this never happened, and he has been dead for some time now. We, we, we have a parallel situation here. Um, uh, the founder of uh, the Jehovah's Witness movement, Charles Taze Russell. It seems like a similar thing happened. Many, many prophecies about the establishment of, of the New Jerusalem or the, or the kingdom. And again, we see that these things never took place. We gotta be very mindful of what we believe, uh, who we follow, um, and, and really look at the Bible, which is the word of God, because we can never go wrong when we follow the teachings of the Word of God, which is the Bible again. Now, <clears throat> again, like I said, this was supposed to happen sometime, um, I think during his lifetime or before the, the uh, generation passed, but it never took place. And um, this very statement, I think, can be found in the uh, what is called the Doctrine and Covenants and was declared in the year 1832. And now this is what it states. Yeah, the word of the Lord concerning his church established in the last days for the restoration of his people. As he has spoken by the mouth of his prophet and for the gathering of his saints to stand upon Mount Zion, which shall be the city of New Jerusalem. Which city shall be built beginning at the temple lot which is appointed by the finger of the Lord in the western boundaries of the state of Missouri and dedicated by the hand of Joseph Smith Jr. and others with whom the Lord was well pleased. Verily, this is the word of the Lord that the city, New Jerusalem, shall be built by the gathering of the saints beginning at this place even the place of the temple which temple shall be reared in this generation for verily this generation shall not pass away until an house shall be built unto the Lord and a cloud shall rest upon it which cloud shall be even the glory of the Lord which shall fill his house that is the declaration that is the pr prophetic word coming from Joseph Smith Jr., which never took place, which never happened. Now, as human beings, we can be drawn away with our own desires. Therefore, we must be in line with the word of God, which is the Bible. Anything in addition to what the Bible has to say about how Christians are to live and conduct themselves should be scrutinized thoroughly. Revelations come from God, from man, 
and the devil. Anything not in line goes against what the Bible has to say must be rejected without question and that goes for the Book of Mormon and its, its teaching. You know, <clears throat> let's be um, plain and straight. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. There is no other truth. Life is only found in the person of Jesus Christ. Anything else that comes along is mere counterfeit. It's the work of the enemy to try to get you to believe a lie. A great lie. This is what's called the apostasy. We have to be very careful. We see that around the same time Jehovah's Witness movement started. Um, again, every, you know, it was all about the restoration of the church. And the fact is everyone thought that the Bible or, or claimed that the Bible has been changed. You'll hear the Jehovah's Witness say it, you'll hear the Mormons say it. So now they have some other books that they put in line with the Bible to teach you as to how to live. That some man had wrote or had written, some man who was looking to heap fame and, and some sort of notoriety on himself. Okay. Um, Let's look at Matthew 7, 15. You will know them by their fruits. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. It matters not how good the message sounds. I believe that God the Father was once a man. Is to be, is to be rejected. Also, teaching that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers is to be rejected. The Bible needs no addition, whether it is the Book of Mormons, the Quran, or any other religious writing or document. It should be rejected as the trick of the devil, again, like I just stated, to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ and to condemn men to hell. This is a serious thing. And this is what's going to happen if we reject the, the, the pure and true gospel of Jesus Christ. Presented by Jesus, uh, reiterated by his disciples and the Apostle Paul. Now Galatians 1.8, New King James Version. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. My friends, the Bible is God's word. Do not listen to those who say it has been changed. It is a trick. I, I can't emphasize that enough. It is a trick. It is a trick. The devil comes, he is subtle. He knows what to use. He knows how to get through to man's heart. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Um, let us take our salvation uh, seriously. Um, there is some that have a form of godliness and they deny the power thereof. You see them go about two by two, three by three, they're out, they're evangelizing. And you know, I have to admit that it's a shame that us who have the gospel, you don't see us out there as you see them. And we are supposed to be out there sharing what is called the good news. The good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he came, he died, he shed his blood for our sins. The only sacrifice that was good enough for God. Nothing else would have worked. If he didn't die for our sins, we would not have eternal life. And that is the, the, the plain and true gospel. That is the plain and true gospel. And Jesus came, he abolished certain things to do with the law. Thank God we're not under law anymore, we're under grace. But yet, even though we're under grace, we have to be mindful and follow the word of God and his teachings. Okay, um, uh, the Bible warns us that false teachers will come in the last days. Um... 
And we see the effects of some of these false teachers. Uh, you have men like uh, Jim Jones, David Koresh, L. Ron Hubbard, uh, Marshall Applewhite, to name a few. It's a long list. And when we fall away from paying close attention to what the Word of God says, men who err, men who go against the scriptures, they go against the Bible, don't be afraid to take, listen, do not place any pastor or teacher to that level that you are blind when they are leading you down a path of, of, of deception. Open your eyes. Read the word of God for yourself. Anything that does not line up with that word is false. I repeat, it is false. If you find yourself in a situation like that, get out immediately. I would admonish you. Uh, Matthew 7, verse 13 through 14. He says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few that find it. Now, my friends, the Bible is telling you many are going to find their way into hell. Many. Because the way is broad. It is wide. And a lot of people, they're going to think that they're right, but they're going to be heading straight to hell and not realize it. And you see it says that narrow is the way. And only few find it. I pray that you're one of those few today that will find that narrow way. That narrow way is through Jesus Christ. No other way. Okay? No other way. Not Islam. Not Buddhism. Not Mormonism. Not Jehovah's Witnesses. None of those sects. None of those cults. None of those false religions are going to bring you into the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And one of the things I'm going to challenge you to do, and Jesus is real, so one of the things I'm going to challenge you to do is you pray to him. You pray. Ask him to reveal himself to you. Because only the Bible says that no man cometh unto the Father unless the Spirit draws him. So ask God today to reveal himself to you. If you're seeking to find the truth, I pray that you will get before God and ask him, pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of Jesus Christ. You pray to him. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal himself. And he certainly will. I don't want anyone to be caught up in cults, false teaching, be sitting in ministries on the false teachers, false prophets, the days are short and the Bible says that we have to preach this good news, the message of Jesus Christ to all the world and that is why I'm here today. I admonish you, seek and you will find research. Pay close attention to what you believe and again anything that's contrary to the Bible which is the word of God, reject it. And until next time I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, open your heart, open your mind to his word. Until next time, take care.